to the Treat Fund webinar series. We are about, oh, three minutes from the start of the webinar, as is our uh, tradition. Please uh, jump in the chat box and let us know where you're coming from. Um, we're, we're fortunate for this webinar series that we have two researchers joining us from the Southern Hemisphere down in Chile. So we're, we're excited to have them here. Welcome, Hong Kong. Welcome, Iowa, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, Argentina, bienvenidos. Hmm. Welcome, Canada, Toronto, Canada. Y'all, we're, we're going to start the webinar in about two minutes, as is our tradition. Jump into the chat box and let us know where you're coming from. It's, it's always exciting for us to see that, and I know the, the speakers also enjoy to see who they might have joining us and from where. Welcome, Boston. Hey, welcome, Sharon, oh. up in Birmingham. Haven't seen Sharon in a number of years. We have a Chile resident uh, joining us. Welcome. Somebody else from Hong Kong, Singapore. Coming in so fast. Sorry if I don't call everybody <laughs> up. There's lots of you. I think we had a thousand people register for today's webinar, and our numbers are where are they at? Oops. Welcome. More Singapore. Welcome, Colorado. Bienvenidos, Puerto Rico. <laughs> Georgia. This is fantastic. Love the Tree Fund webinar series. It's a pleasure to be here um, and be able to participate on this series few times a year. Um, and I think we've got a great number of webinars that Heath and the, the staff at Tree Fund have been working on for us for the rest of the year. Welcome, New Zealand. Our brother's living back down in that part of the world again. Bienvenidos, Argentina. New York, Missouri. Hello, Romania. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, everybody, my clock is reading 12 Central Times, so welcome to the Tree Fund webinar series. Welcome to all of you who are joining us from across the globe. I think we've seen people from Europe and from New Zealand, from South Asia, and from South America. So welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Bo Broadbeck, uh, and it's a welcome to... Uh, uh, welcome you on behalf of Auburn University. Um, we are the one of the the co-hosts of the Tree Fund webinar series, and as always, it is a pleasure to be able to share the Tree Fund webinar uh, with the rest of you around the world. We have a great uh, presentation for you today on unlocking the potential of computer vision for urban tree screening. So. A very different topic coming from some uh, some two fantastic research engineers coming out of uh, various universities in Chile. But before I introduce them, I just wanted to highlight a few things about Tree Fund. I know many of you might be familiar with Tree Fund, and I want to be begin by thanking our crown partners and our platinum partners that make the work we do and the research that we fund every year at Tree Fund possible. Um, you see those partners listed here on the screen, as well as the various donations that come from companies um, and arborists and citizens from around the world. Thank you for the support of Tree Fund that makes the research that we're going to be able to share with you today possible. A few points. I know some of you are interested in uh, continuing education Credits. Yes, we are pre-certified for both ISA and SAF. Uh, a couple of notes on how we do those. When you registered for this webinar, we asked for your first and last name and your certification number. So we now have that information. You don't need to share it with us again. And based on that information and cross-referencing that with who actually attended today's webinar, you do need to stay on for the entirety of the webinar. We will send that data directly to ISA. Um, ISA asks for a few weeks for that to post. These are large webinars, large numbers of people. So give them about four weeks 
before you see those CEUs post to the website. And we do it the same way for the SAF credits. If you have any questions, take uh, send an email to that uh, to that email below, which is education at treefund.org. And Heath Hupke, who is on with me today on, on behalf of Tree Fund, will respond to any of your questions. So fantastic webinar today. We got some others scheduled for you for the rest of the year. On October 8th, we're gonna have Dr. Robert uh, Fahey talking about modeling, monitoring and modeling changes in tr street tree communities over time. And then on November 5th, we're gonna have Greg Dahl talk to us about trees ca tree caused outages and what we know and what we have learned. So two fantastic pro uh, research projects that have been funded um, in the past. I wanted to highlight something that maybe not everybody's aware of. I know a lot of the research we fund at Tree Fund tends to be in North America. However, we do have a number of researchers and programs that are focused on research outside of the United States, and particularly the Jack Camel International Grant Program. Um, it funds our boriculture research applicants coming from outside the United States. And so it's specifically focused $10,000 a year for novel research that is outside of the United States. And so for those of you in the research community, take a look at that at treefund.org. And then we also have the John Z. Dooling Grant, which really provides uh, research to support um, untested and potentially transformative research ideas and approaches. And that is uh, the two researchers joining us today um, are gonna be sharing some of the research that was funded through the John Z. Dooling Grant program, which every year it's a $25,000 yeah. grant program. Um, just wanted to highlight that we have an upcoming grant cycle opens August 1st. For any of you researchers that are sitting there, be aware that the John Z. Dooling that funded the research we're going to be learning from today is, is coming open. Of course, the Jack uh, Kimmel International. We have a newer one, the Safe Arborist Techniques, which really looks at improving safety in our boar culture. Um, and then the Bob Skier Memorial Fund, the Building Bridges Initiative Grant Funds, and then the tree and soil research grant program that really focuses on things like tree preservation and soil, and then the Highland Johns grant programs as well. So go to treefund.org. You can look at the down tab on grants to learn more about those. The other highlight I wanted to make today is, as many of you know, uh, Tree Fund signature fundraising event each year is the Tour de Trees. It's a fantastic event. I have participated five times. Absolutely love it. Um, and it's a great way to uh, support the research. This is the, how we fund a lot of the research that we do. And so if you're a cyclist and in North America and really want to support Tree Fund, come join us this year in New England. The Tour de Trees is going to happen from September 22nd through 28th. I think it starts in Connecticut. It's ending in Rhode Island. Um, and it's a great way to uh, show your support for Tree Fund through this fundraising activities. If you're not a cyclist, um, you can certainly go to the treefund.org, go to the Tour de Trees, and find a cyclist and donate to that cyclist uh, ride that they're going to be doing. So take a look at that. Um, also, there's other ways to support Tree Fund. For those of you that maybe aren't into cycling, we have um, a way to do the virtual ride. So for people that maybe can't take the time off work, maybe you're not a big cyclist, you can support and become a virtual rider um, and do your, your virtual efforts, which I think this year is you, you want to do 400 miles, and it can be 400 miles of kayaking, walking, running, whatever it might be to support Tree Fund in a different way. So take a look at that on the Tree Fund website. Uh, and just don't forget that when you make a donation to Tree Fund, it is tax deductible. And you can find out how to donate by going to treefund.org and hit donate now. And just remember, we're supporting our industry. So with that uh, introduction, I wanted to let me stop sharing my screen and let me introduce our two fantastic presenters today. So uh, with us today, we have uh, Dr. Jose Del Piano and Dr. Tito Arevalo Ramirez. Um, and let me introduce each of them. Uh, Dr. Jose Del Piano is, electrical, is an electrical engineer with a PhD from the University of Chile. He currently serves as an associate professor at the Universidad de los Andes in Chile, 
His research interest lies in the field of computational intelligence with a particular focus of artificial intelligence in machine learning applications in computer vision. So, wow, a very technical background. I don't think we've had that before on the Tree Fund webinar series, so we're, we're very excited. And with him today is Dr. Tito Arevalo Ramirez, um, who is an electrical engineer with a PhD from the University of Tecnica Federico Santa Maria. Um, he is an assistant professor at the uh, Pontifica Universidad Católica de Chile. His research interests lie in remote sensing, field robotics, and robot perception, focusing on artificial vision technology application for uh, vegetation characteristics, characterization. So welcome to both of you. Thank you very much for being on the Tree Fund webinar series. Um, and I'll just throw this out there for you. Um, and speaking to uh, both Dr. Del Piano and Ramirez, I think uh, English is not their first language. And so some patients out there, as I have presented before in Spanish, and it is very challenging to present in a different language. So welcome to both of you, and thank you for being on here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you both for, for your introduction, and thank you, Heath, for, for, having, for having us here. It's very exciting to be here presenting about our research. And we've been exploring what computer vision can do for, for arborists. Uh, how, can, how can artificial intelligence help arborists? We know some arborists uh, may have a lot of trees. Uh, they may be in charge of a lot of trees. So we think in the future, Artificial intelligence should should help them, and uh, I guess uh, an AI tool will say maybe you shouldn't visit all these uh, trees because they they are healthy, they are okay, and and then arborists can focus on uh, other trees that may have uh, that may pose some risk to people or property. And I will be, I will start talking about our team, then a little bit about the services provided by urban trees, um, the perspective of electric companies, distribution, electric distribution companies, and then Dr. Arevalo will uh, show you our computer vision research in, in urban trees. Uh, first of all, we are here in Chile, in Santiago, in Chile, down there. And uh, the way to to think about the size of Chile, this this may be a, a fun way to think about the size of Chile. Uh, those are countries in some countries in Europe, and you could fit them in regions of of Chile. So it's a very uh, narrow country very narrow place. And this is our team. I want to, to show you our team because most of us are uh, electrical and software engineers. Um, so the, we, we have a, one expert in, in urban trees there in the middle. Um, but most of us are uh, electrical engineers and and and, uh, and software engineers working on artificial intelligence uh, we, we've got a lot of nice very nice students graduate and undergraduate students and um, great support staff here at the university of the andes so first we will know the advantages of having of having trees in our cities uh, I guess most of us love having trees near a, a home or office and they provide shade oxygen they may help uh, mitigating the effects of climate change but they Arboriculture behind those trees is not simple. 
Um, we can understand it as a mixture of science and art. There, are, there is knowledge, expert knowledge, skills, a lot of skills, intuition, and facts that are combined are around the growth of trees. And arborists uh, provide care, uh, but they are diagnosing trees, assessing, evaluating trees, and they had to prescribe some things for trees as a physician would do with, with us, with, with people. And there are several indicators of risk in urban trees. There are root problems, cankers, cracks. There are, we can see wood decay in trunk and branches. We can see uh, weak trunk or weak branch unions or architecture that branches the trees. And so we wanted to, to help in some of these indicators with computer vision and artificial intelligence. The risks um, are, are maybe serious if, if trees are not being maintained properly, um, a large, a massive branch or a whole tree can fall down and uh, destroy uh, cars, uh, homes, buildings, other buildings, um, and, or injuring people or even killing people. Uh, I'm sorry, there are some slides with a little bit of, of Spanish. Please focus on the photos. I wanted to show you this photo of a whole tree that fell down because of problems in, in its roots. Um, maybe building a building damaged the roots of the tree and it fell down. This is a relatively light tree. It's not a very heavy or a very old tree, but uh, uh, but there was a, an old, uh, uh, relatively old woman working, and she had problems to to go fast, so she couldn't escape, and and she was uh, she passed away because of this tree, this, this tree which is not very um, heavy or very all very large. This is one more case of a, of a very, this is one case of a very large tree, very old, a beautiful tree that fell down in a city in southern Chile. And experts in risk assessment for urban trees um, have to take into account several aspects of, of, uh, of urban trees. They have to um, see the context and then identify risks. Uh, I mean, not, not just the probability of, of a branch or a tree failing, but also uh, what what would be what is behind it? What will be damaged by that branch or that tree? That way they can analyze that risk, risk evaluate it, um, and then manage it. This um, this is an example of where where we're going to find some factors related to risk. Number five there is a sort of dead or dry branch and uh, that could fail. Number seven is um, uh, there was pruning there that was not done properly. It's, uh, it was a, a very, uh, it was done when, when the branch was quite thick, so that may 
be a problem afterwards later. And I, I'd like to show you just one slide of the perspective of electric distribution companies, because for them, this is the problem. Uh, branches or trees that are, not, that are not being properly maintained may fall down and cut wires or short circuit uh, power lines. And that means uh, power outages and they have to uh, pay the users, pay the clients for power outages that are longer than a number of hours. And they, they say around 10% of power outages are related, in, in our country, are related to, uh, are due to causes related with trees, trees or branches falling down. So in any um, artificial intelligence project, data is, is fundamental uh, in any project with computer vision or artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. Data is, is, um, is an asset. So we started developing a platform to, to get images from trees. And this uh, diagram for, for our platform. Uh, I hope you are seeing my my pointer. It, uh, I, I see it quite small, but I, I've been told you can see it. Um, so in, in the left, people with their mobile phones, the cameras of their mo mobile phones, they use our app. They use our mobile app. And this mobile app tells them what photos to take from, from trees, from a tree they are sampling. And the, our mobile app asks them uh, some simple questions, some basic parameters they can provide without having a, without being an arborist or without being um, trained for that. So, for each sample, we get a uh, um, localization, images, and basic parameters. We store that information, and we are we we are adding some parameters that are measured by artificial intelligence. We train uh, some AI models with data coming from from experts. From, from arborists. Uh, so our AI, AI models can estimate some of the things that, that an expert would measure. And then we have uh, this rich data that we, we will potentially show to, to companies through an API access. And uh, API means application programming in, interface and to the general public via web access. This is the sort of data we, we are getting. This, these are examples of uh, a portrait um, photo of, of a tree. And she's, she's using our app to, to take a photo of, of, the, of the trunk of the tree. And this is what the, the app looks like on, on the left. You can see a map uh, with um, some number of points. I'm sorry again about this little bit of Spanish in this slide, in the next slides. So there are some areas in the map and we can, in a, in a sampling campaign, and we can change the points assigned to, to areas. So if an area is not being covered properly, we can uh, um, assign more points to that area. And then the app uh, guides the user to the participant to, 
take some photos and to ask some, to answer some questions. And this was a campaign we had very recently with a local school, a school that is near uh, University of the Andes. Uh, on the on the right, uh, I know it's in Spanish, but it's a very nice advert the school did for for this campaign. They were very enthusiastic about um, working with us. Uh, very enthusiastic about participating in, 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 in this project. And they form three groups, three teams. One was the sort of a green brigade, or the other one was the student union in this school. And there was a third team, uh, the school missions. And they were competing for, for points um, and, and for cash prizes. There was there were prizes for getting for a thousand points, two thousand points, and for winning the for being the team with, with more points. And uh, this experiment uh, and this experiment was very important for us because we are testing this gamification model. I mean, we are sort of uh, making them play a game um, to, 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 to get this goal done of, of um, sampling a lot of, a lot of trees. And, and we wanted to know uh, how, much, how much does one tree cost? Um, so we we have done before uh, sampling in other parts of the city with another model, paying paying for for an hour of sampling without the gamification uh, side of it, without the gamification idea. So we wanted to know uh, the costs with this model, with this gamification model, and we we learned several things, the coverage, um, I guess we, we would need more, more time and more um, direction to, to get uh, a good coverage in this area. We, um, uh, maybe we, we will need more changes in the points uh, assigned to regions in this in this area, um, but the participation, but it was was very nice to to see the engagement of, of students, of pupils in the school. This is uh, a few screenshots of the gamification part of the game. On the left, there are challenges. To, to users and to teams, we, we can have challenges. Um, we can have, um, oh, on the middle, uh, there's a ranking of, of the three teams and their points. And on the right, um, user ranking. We can see that the, how, um, how many points for each user for each participant. In total, we have more than 14,000 samples of urban trees here in Santiago. And, and this number is growing and this number start, starts to be interesting for deep learning because you need databases, image databases in the order of thousands to, to be able to properly train an, an AI model. And now I'll, um, Dr. Arevalo will continue the presentation of, of uh, computer vision results. Thank you very much, uh, Jose, for the introduction. 
Hello to everyone. Yes, I'm going to talk about the computer vision. Uh, well, as the professor has said, uh, said before, um, all the data we have, we need to process it and to use or to be properly used in a deep learning model. To the same, we have prepared different uh, methodologies in order to get the best deep learning outcomes. Okay, our first stage, uh, uh, something to mention, uh, I, I forget uh, the, the research, the computer vision research allows us to publish into two, uh, two journals, uh, urban forestry and urban greening journal, and also to the IEEE journal of selected topics. So we are very proud about the the result we have or we already have. However, there there is still a lot of work we we need to make in order to further improve and further push the the already deep learning models. Uh, what about the segmentation? Well, the the main goal is try to determine a, a three risk. However, we need first to identify where are the trees how many trees are in a single photo. Um, and all that information, we have uh, all that uh, procedure. For all that procedure, we started with a segmentation model, with a semantic segmentation model. However, the data we have is that uh, in the data we have, we do not have annotation. So the first step is perform a manual annotation of the trees. What does it mean manual annotation? It means just to create a binary mask of the places or the, the, the areas of the image where there exists an, a tree. In the current uh, image, you can see we have at the left an RGB image of a tree and to the right is the mask of the tree. All the white po white points represents the trees. In our first stage, we have some problems because, uh, well, the first problem was that we don't have enough data. Uh, why we don't? Why we did not have enough data? Because we because manual annotation is a very time consuming uh, process. So at the beginning, we start using only one hundred images from all the uh, from all the data set we already have constructed and we start playing with some deep learning models. However, we identify some problems. In 100 uh, samples or, or 100 images are not enough. That's why Professor Jose del Piano told us th that we need a lot of images. Uh, however, how we can, uh, how we can, how can, how, how how we do how we do work how we did work with the 100 images our first uh, strategy was using an image to image model image to image model are generative models so we have generated some urban tree images using a generative model and then start uh, training the segmentation model in the in the block of the right side, we show you that we uh, four models that we that uh, which were trained using our data set, Arbotensus data set, and also we have show the we, we also show the the models we have used. It is a segformer, which is a transformer, and a deep deep lab version three, which is a. a Deep uh, convolution is a deep learning model that is based on convolutional neural networks. And well, then how we how how what was the procedure in order to evaluate the models? We're using intersection over union that refers how many how many pixels from the images have been predicted to be um, uh, three pixel and then compare with the ground truth. Uh, something to mention, the ground truth refers to the, the 
binary mask that we have already constructed uh, using manual annotation. Based on this, uh, on this first methodology, we have the, the following results. As we can see in, the, in, in, in this slide, uh, the green areas or the, yes, the green area represents the true positive pixels. That means that uh, pixels that are correctly leveled as three points by the deep learning models. This is this is one of, of, of our best results. However, here we have to take into account that this is an uh, easy an easy image. Why? Because with the background of the tree or all, all the things that are behind the tree are buildings and also are sky. Uh, we in, in the next uh, slides we might show you some some of the, the difficult, uh, some of the problems we have. Um, uh, that the slide before was about the segmentation model, but we also have information about the trunks and also the genera. This information, the these images that we show here, uh, we use it to classify trees. Uh, that uh, classify trees by it, they they are genera. So we have selected uh, seven the seven most uh, or seven popular genera or seven popular uh, species from here from Santiago, and we created a classification neural network in order to identify each of these uh, species, these genera, three three genera. Uh, what we have used it for that, uh, uh, we use it uh, convolutional ne neural networks, and um, which had been already trained with a big data set called ImageNet. Uh, uh, something uh, to show you here that uh, maybe a. a, a that it might be wise to mention before continuing is showing some of the samples, some of the three images that we have in our complete data set. Uh, once again, white points, white pixels represent the places where are the trees. And also we have uh, selected or we have uh, segmented, manually annotated, Pixels where there exists only trunks. Why we are interested in only trunks and also in the entire tree? Because if we have the information of the tree and the trunk, we can determine what is what will be the shape of the crown or uh, yes, the crown of the tree, and then we can infer what is the the, the structure of the crown of the tree. Here, uh, here I'm going to take advantage of these images because uh, I want to show you some of the problems. Because, uh, for example, the most right image, we can see that there exists a uh, very uh, tiny tree, um, a small tree. However, in the background, there exists a lot of trees that represents a very difficult uh, a scene for semantic segmentation of the tree. Also for a human annotator, it's difficult to identify where, uh, which, uh, which part of the images or which areas of the images represent uh, the tree of interest. And this is one of the main challenges that is that haven't been that is still or that needs to be solved in future works, and it also um, a common problem when. Uh, for semantic segmentation of trees that is popular in the state of the art or the state of sorry of previous work previous works talk about uh, talk about this challenge that ha that is need to be solved regarding the classification of trees uh, 
okay, here we have created, uh, here we have used a ResNet uh, deep, deep learning model, which have been pre-trained using an, an ImageNet. ImageNet is a very big data set, a very big data set uh, that we have used in order to, to be able to to characterize the or uh, to get image futures so that we can recognize uh, the three the three genera in this stage uh, at, at this stage we have three three data sets from where we get uh, information about three genera arbo census the data set we have created uh, and two public available data sets, BarkNet and Jekyll data set. Uh, using these three data sets, we have created four, mo sorry, five models, and then we have compared them using a, a confusion matrix. Uh, using the confusion matrix or the results uh, shows that the the best model or the best the model that uh, outputs the best outcomes is the model one the model that is trained using only Arbo census. Uh, why we have such results? Uh, well, uh, we are still working on that, and one of one of our first guess is that models are the information or the three genus information from Jekyll and Barnett is not good enough in order to be generalized to it's not good enough or it's not enough to build a rest net model a deep learning model that could be generalized in order to be used in other in other cities so up to now the our results shows that uh, deep learning models for three genus classification are city dependent. That, that, that have some kind of uh, uh, that that is not uh, that, that is kind of expected because in each city and each country uh, the municipalities has their own strategies or yeah, their own process in order to care of trees. For instance, in J the Jekyll dataset is from Asia, it's a dataset from Asia, and then the trunks in Asia um, are painted with white, uh, in white, painted with uh, in white in order to determine the 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 height of the trunk or at, as uh, the breast diameter at breast height. Then uh, three trunk and segmentation. Uh, these are uh, these deep learning models were trained for also for. Uh, segmenting trees, individual trees, and also for segmenting only the trunk. In this second stage, we, uh, we have trained about 12 models, but with the difference is that uh, they, are on, they are trained using Arbo census and also the public available Jekyll dataset. In this stage, we already have more information about the no more information. We have more le manual manually leveled data. So our models, the models we have generated, we have generated were much better that the, the than the models we trained in an, uh, in the first stage. The results uh, are shown in the right side, also for an Arbo census and Jekyll. Here we are showing uh, the best results of semantic segmentation models. And once again, as we can see, uh, best results are, are obtained used uh, when the trees or the tree of interest, the background of the tree of interest are not other trees or we have a, 
open sky or buildings behind the tree because it helps to the deep learning models uh, to recognize trees and that are is that are the easy scenarios in order to recognize trees. Regarding the genus classification, uh, the best model that uh, that we get was once again was ArboCensus. Uh, was the model trained with ArboCensus data, and here we have some of the. Uh, here is the confusion matrix that shows uh, the results in general. We have for uh, an accuracy of for each for each cl classes. We have an accuracy from over to 0 0.7 or 70 percent. However, there are some cases, for, for instance, Platanus, Pronus, and Kiaha, that, that species are correctly classified with a 100%. A 100% of classification uh, is something uh, one at the first time can say, oh, okay, the, the deep learning model is working perfect. However, that that that's something that one experience it experience it deep learning designed uh, should care because one hundred percent of classification might mean that the deep learning model is overfitting. Uh, however, when we have analyzed the data and if we return uh, about uh, three to two slices in order to see the images of the the classification can we one slice more before please one more here we can see that for platanus pronus and kiyaha they are the most different uh, or they have the the most different textures from Acer, Hakaranda, Liki, Dambar, and Melia. The cortex of the the three, the three genera that is the the images that are on the bottom are very similar for the for the naked eye. However, in the for the platanus, pronus, and Guillaja, they are the they have the most different uh, texture. So they might be easy to recognize if they are placed together with Acer, Hakaran, Dali, Kibidambar, or all mil, 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 milia species. We can continue. And so about tree segmentation, they, they are once again, they, they, they are the best results for tree segmentation and also for trunk segmentation. In trunk segmentation, we have, uh, as we said here, a balanced canopy. We have also presented, uh, we have also determined the, if the crowns are balanced and also we have determined the shape of the, the crown. However, they have no being, uh, published yet so so we are still waiting for some revisions and regarding the trunk the the trunk we also have uh, in the next slide we we have show the degree of inclination or how how inclined are the the trunks of each tree in order to determine the inclination or the tilt of the trunks we uh, we use uh, the estimated or the yes the the estimated uh, mass from the segmentation models, and then we determine using some basic future uh, functions of image processing the degrees of inclination. Uh, this is uh, it is important to mention that the it, this is an initial step for determining trunk inclination uh, because uh, the inclination is computed uh, regard, uh, relative to the image 
we might need in future works, we, we need to improve this inclination calculation in order to perform or in order to determine the inclination with respect to the to the ground, to the actual ground or the, to, to the real ground instead of the image. And well, that, that's about the computer vision. Now I'm going to, to give the word to Professor Jose del Piano. Thank you, Tito. Well, we we been lucky to be in the local media. We we were in a in an article in a local newspaper and in some uh, news websites, some local news websites. And our next steps would be first integration of sampling and our aut automated analysis. Uh, right now, uh, sampling is uh, is running quite nicely, and sometimes the analysis run afterwards in our office in our computer. We, we would like to display the results of artificial intelligence to to the to the general public. The, that integration is not uh, ready yet. And the other uh, step we would like to to have is having specific so software for some use cases. Because one use case is um, to give input information to management platforms in counties, and but another use case is to. Uh, check interaction between trees and electrical in infrastructure, power infrastructure. That, that's interesting to electric companies. And, and we are open to evaluate other use cases. So that's all on our side. Uh, it would be nice to hear your, your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Del Piano and Dr. Uh, Arevalo. Thank you. Fantastic presentation. Um, you know, it's just fascinating to see the integration of you know this technology with tree care, and there's so much nuance with you know trying to train AI and 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 get it to a point where it can start to feed out um, some of the data that we need. And so, thank you very much for this research um, and sharing it. I thought it was just fascinating to see kind of the integration. Of, of citizen science, you know, into your project, you know, working with college kids um, and making a game out of it. So um, thank you. We do have a few questions for those joining us. I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the webinar. If you have questions, please put those in the Q&A box. We got about nine minutes or so. Um, and you can put those questions there. Um, and also, as a reminder, we are recording this. It will be available on treefund.org. Um, give us a couple days, and uh, the staff heat will post that on that website if you want to go back and rewatch it or share it with some other folks. And real quick, before I jump into the questions, as a reminder, because it always comes up, CEUs, the way we handle CEUs, um, ISA or SAF, is based on today's attendance records and the, the certification number name that you provided during registration we will send that information on your behalf directly to ISA. So you're not going to see the uh, um, the CEU number or anything posted here. We will take care of that if you were on the webinar today. So with that, um, I'll, I'll jump in and look at some of the questions. Um, uh, first one is a comment. Um, uh, Chris Madison asks, what type of vegetation, vegetation indices um, are there with RGB data? Because, sorry, that's as above my my knowledge. So, um, do you? <laughs> I think that one is good for for Tito. Hi. Yes, uh, we have a, a predictor of computed on RGB vegetation indices. Vegetation indices refers to 
to, or is a way to determine the status of the vegetation. Vegetation indices are generally computed using multispectral information or hyperspectral information. However, there exists some RGB vegetation indices that, that uh, give us information about the, the status of the vegetation. Uh, I'm going to check what, what were the, the specific vegetation indices we have computed um uh, in this in this research because there are plenty and I already do not remember all of them. Sure, thank you. Uh, we have another question here. Um, it says, is data collected in the field initially collected by individuals or are you also utilizing drone footage or UAS footage? We are not using we are not using drone footage. Um, it was very um, it was very interesting to us in the beginning. We thought about an idea based on drones because they are uh, more fun. But in the end, this idea was easier to to fund because uh, because of engaging people in 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 the in the sampling. Uh, that was interesting to to the state, and that was interesting also to um, get people to know about trees. Thank you, and Dr. Anabel. I see you got your hand up. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, just to, to mention the vegetation indices uh, that we have used in the in our first stage is a color index of ve vegetation extraction, excess green index. Excess, excess red index, uh, green leaf index, modify green red vegetation index, uh, and then we have more of them uh, in order just to be ex uh, to answer you, you, the the question. Also, we have a preprint with uh, with that information that we can that we might can can share at the end or maybe share the links. Thank you. Yeah, if there's anything you want to share, you could probably put it in the chat. And if there's anything, and people can click on it there. Um, let's see here. Next question. Um, they ask, are you making the data you have collected public, including your your human annotations, I guess, I guess within the app? We are not yet, we're not yet um, making our data uh, public. Um, it's available on request. Our data is uh, available. If you want to do some research on it, it's it's available. Please uh, email to me and um, or to Tito or, or anyone in the team, and, and and we can provide data and annotations for for our data. Thank you. And I did notice that. Uh... Dr. Aravello posted that link in the chat for those that were interested in that. Take a look at it there. Um, next question. There's a question here from uh, Clayton Gray and asked, are you soliciting data collection locally and in other localities to improve your data set? Or is that further down the road uh, when algorithms are more robust? I think uh... We are interested in, in, in data that, that is more diverse, I mean, from more localities. And we will need to translate our app, for instance. We, we need some, some work before that. But data is interesting right now um, because uh, the larger our data set, the better the AI models we will get. Absolutely. And kind of along those lines, there's a question here that says, are, are there other groups globally who are also working on this type or similar development of AI, AI tools for tree risk assessment? And if so, how much cooperation is occurring amongst the groups? Um... So the, there are other groups working on this type of research because, for instance, 
the data, the JGU data set we, we mentioned is, um, um, it looks quite um, focused on this type of research. We don't know what they aim, maybe, I don't know whether they are aiming at, at our same goal to help arborists, uh, but they have a data set that is very similar to to what we need what we need for, for that kind of, of of AI tools. Thank you, Dr. Lepiano. And I was gonna jump ahead here. There's a question and somebody asks, have any urban foresters or arborists uh, looked at the trees from their jurisdiction uh, to see if if it provides the information that that they needed coming out of this tool. So we the expert information from related to urban trees. We we have two sources for for two sources of um, expert knowledge. One is a researcher in our team who is an expert in urban trees. He has guided us not to uh, to do something that is useful for, for them, for that, uh, for, for arborists. And our other source of information is a local company that um, of, of ex expert arborists. They are... Um, they have um, they offer a service of a census of, of urban trees, a traditional census. I mean, they they get a group of two or three people that are trained in urban trees. They go tree by tree, and they measure some things with uh, equipment, and that is very and and we have that information they they um, share that information to us and we use it to train our ai models well thank you and i think that brings us to the top of the hour i want to thank both of you for a fantastic presentation um thank you very much for joining us and sharing your knowledge on the tree fund webinar series um and thanks for providing it um, in English. Um, I know it's, having given Spanish presentations, I know it's difficult. And I'm sure you're tired from having to, to think through all of that. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you on today. Um, thanks to all of you who joined us on the Tree Fund webinar series. We'll be back. If you want more information about our webinars, want to rewatch this one, just go to treefund.org. Um, to look at those. And don't forget to provide a donation to Tree Fund. It supports research like this, looking at new and innovative techniques as we continue to advance the field of arboriculture and urban forestry. So thank you to both of you. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and see y'all next time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. I will try to answer some of the questions by typing. And yeah, we and we can provide you those questions. Um, I'll provide you a transcript of those questions, and y'all are welcome to uh, to reach out so we can post those. Thank you all. Okay. And have thank the rest you. of your day. Thank you, Dr. Rolo and Del Piano.